Independent feeding is something your baby can try from birth if he's ready and well enough. Anita has just given birth to triplets, born at 32 weeks gestation. She's about to meet her babies for the first time. Baby Thomas is stable and well enough to come out of the incubator for some skin-to-skin -skin contact. Anita soon finds that with Thomas in this position, he's showing signs that he might be ready to try feeding at the breast. So he'll do what he wants. He doesn't need any force. He just he'll just find it his own way. How's that? What we'll do, I'm just gonna leave him there, just doing what he does naturally. Okay, it doesn't matter that he's not doing loads of sucking. Okay, he's against your skin. That'll encourage the lactation and he's comfortable and happy. I didn't think he would latch on like that. But he just knows. And he just is suckling now, look. You see that? He's suckling. At 32 weeks, Thomas isn't yet able to take a full feed at the breast and he'll still need to receive most of his milk through a nasogastric tube, but he's made a good start. This afternoon, I breastfed little Thomas. It was wonderful. I felt fantastic. Just totally out of this world. Kind of like a heavenly experience, completely switched off. Um, it was better than a good bottle of wine. Feeding independently is a skill, and it's one which many babies take some time to master. Whether they're breastfeeding or bottle feeding, they need to be able to coordinate three very important activities, sucking, swallowing, and breathing. If your baby is born very early or poorly, they may need to be fed by tube for weeks or even months. But as they progress, you and the neonatal staff may begin to notice signs that they're ready to start trying to feed independently. Your baby may be more wakeful, especially in skin-to-skin -skin contact. They may make licking or sucking movements. or suck their fingers or thumb. You may notice the rooting reflex. Your baby may turn their head towards something that touches their cheek or lip with an open mouth or sucking movements. The development of sucking, swallowing and breathing happens quite slowly. So at around sort of 30 to 32 weeks, a baby might st start to show signs of, of wanting to root and lick and, and have a few swallows at the breast. But this, they'll still be having very small amounts, which won't be a significant amount nutritionally. So it's important that they continue re receiving the bulk of their nutrition via their nasogastric um, tube. But this is a really important time for mums and babies to be together as much as possible, for mums to learn more about those cues and get used to handling their babies, um, get used to the kind of position uh, that might be helpful for feeding um, later on. Skin to skin with his mother Vicky, baby Jacob is alert and making licking movements. This is a good time for him to practice sucking and giving him a dummy can help. Nurse Beverly puts a few drops of Vicky's breast milk on the teat. Jake's showing us that he's smelling mum. He's showing us he really wants to suck, so it would be good to, to give him a bit of an opportunity now. And as it's his feed time, it would be good for him to have a taste of breast milk while his tummy fills up because that will give him the association between the feed and mum's milk and having a full tummy. Stacy's baby Darcy has reached a gestational age of 32 weeks and she's showing signs that she may be ready to start learning to feed independently. Here, we can see her making sucking and licking movements. 
Stacy wants to breastfeed, so today she'll receive some support from Linda, a breastfeeding specialist. Great, she's breastfeeding. But if she's quite young and not quite ready for breastfeeding, um, then what you might get is little short bursts of sucking. A few First, Linda explains that the transition to the breast won't happen immediately. It's a process that can take weeks. It's not just about the ability to attach and suck and swallow. It's about the ability, it's your heart rate and your breathing being stable and also about the ability to cope with the flow of milk as well. So very early days, but it's always worth practicing. So the important thing is not to come in and think, oh, she didn't do it. She'll just progress little bits and little bits. Practice makes perfect. It yeah. does, it does. And it gives her the opportunity to learn these skills. Mm -hmm. They're really not within your gift to make her do them. They happen with maturity and um, her being in the right place to practice. First, it's important that Stacey brings Darcy into a good position at the breast. So what we want to do is try what we call positioning, just having her near the breast. Bring her in um, so she's... Um, not twisted when she's feeding, so she needs her nose to be in line with her knees, because you wouldn't be able to drink like this, twisted. No. Bring her in nice and close, allow her to tilt back her head. You need to have the nipple pointing towards the nose, because when she tilts back the head, actually the nipple will end up in the right place. And then just bring her to the breast, just let her head tilt back, and just let her lick about, and you can wipe the nipple up and down, from nose to mouth, up and down like that and we'll see if she'll be interested in attaching. But see the little licks that she's mm -hmm. starting to have, which is absolutely great. Now, we'll see if she'll go on and have a few wee sucks there. That's great. Oh, now I'm licking the nipple. That's great. A few wee sucks. Linda and Stacy are now watching for Darcy to open her mouth in a wide gape. If she does this, Stacy must be ready to bring her quickly onto the breast so that she attaches well.